Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I bid you all a very warm welcome. It's lovely to see you all. Please be seated. Now, just to explain, um, this morning I'm going to go to Sunday school with the kids after the kids talk, so that's why I'm not in my robes. Uh, Sarah's uh, in charge this morning, and uh, she will be preaching and seeing the service, uh, leading the service after I go. So just to explain that, and uh, we're in, she's in good, we're in good, capable hands with Sarah. Can I just uh, direct your attention to Pew News for a few moments, please? You can see all that's happening in the next wee while. Uh, first of all, to say this evening, we have a united service in the Arma, First Armagh Presbyterian Church with our Methodist and Presbyterian friends. If you or anybody you know you, uh, would usually go to the evening service, please do help spread the word. Um, if you phone someone and remind them, tell them, tell them uh, you know, if they're saying, why are you remind me? I know that already. Say, because Malcolm told me to. Okay, so you can blame me. But uh, if you could help, just make sure everybody knows uh, that we're in the uh, Presbyterian Church tonight. And just to say, you're really welcome to that. It should be a nice time uh, of worship and sharing together. So in Arma, uh, First Arma Presbyterian Church this evening, you can see all that's happening during the week um, uh, inside the, the Pew News sheet. Just to commend Friday night, the Psalms uh, Friday Night Live is always a very encouraging night about mission. And, and so this year it's in Annick Moore Parish Church Hall. So change of venue, it's usually in the, been in the past in the Craig Avon Civic Centre, but it's in Annick Moore this evening, Annick Moore Parish Church Hall. Um, also to say that you can see uh, a little announcement about The Well. It's a cafe church service. It's a new, uh, new addition to what we're offering here in church. It's going to be in the hall on the second Sunday night of the month. And uh, it's a very informal service, uh, a very relaxed informal service. And if that is something that you enjoy, very informal worship, this is a special service which we hope that you'll enjoy. So please do help spread the word about that. Sarah will be leading that. I'll be up here in the usual seven o'clock service here in church. But it's something special, something different, once a month down the hall. And uh, just help spread the word about that, uh, that that's a wee opportunity available to everyone to go along and be part of. Um, Pinnacles is out at the moment, the Feb February edition of Pinnacles. For those of you who deliver, if you'd have a wee look in the back seat uh, to my right, just to the back seat to my right, opposite the font, there's uh, Pinnacles bundles for those who deliver them. Um, can I just mention that in, in page one, two, three, four, page four, there's a seniors lunch advertised. My fault, I put the 8th of February, but it should be the 15th of February. 15th of February, a senior's lunch, not the 8th as advertising pinnacles, which is something we noticed after it all got printed. But uh, there's a sign-up sheet for that senior's lunch in the porch, so you can sign up for it there, or else give Bob a phone, and the number's in pinnacles for giving Bob a ring uh, to book yourself in for that. So anybody who'd like to go to that, the, it's on Wednesday the 15th of February, not the 8th, and uh, you can book in by contacting Bob or use a sign-up sheet. Um, and then next Sunday, uh, there's a Youth Alpha beginning. If you look at the back page of Pinnacles, sorry, a back page of Pew News, there's a Youth Alpha beginning in the hall. Michael's leading that. And that's for anybody who's been confirmed and older. So anybody who's sort of year 11 in school or above, a special opportunity. The, the, those who have been approaching confirmation class have done it, and I think it's gone really well. So that's why it's been offered for those who have been confirmed and would be interested. So details about that on, Pinnac uh, on Pew News at the back page. Uh, anybody who'd like to go to that, you'd be really welcome. And Michael will be in the Windsor room, uh, and he'll be leading that. So just to commend that to anyone of year 11 in school or above. So I think that's all the announcements. Have a look and be involved in whatever way you feel led. I'm going to hand over to Sarah now. Thank you. Morning, everybody. Um, our service this morning begins on page 101 of your Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. So with you. We stand together as we sing our first hymn, which is number 646.
Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us sit or kneel as we bring to mind the things that we shouldn't have done this week. We confess our sins to God our Father, saying together on page 102, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, before we go to Sunday school, boys and girls, I want to talk to you a wee bit this morning about some of the things that you see around us here in church. Now, yesterday we had our day of prayer, and during the day it was lovely. There was lots of different people filtered in during the day to pray at the different points that you can see about different things. Some examples are this is a, a table which has been made for people who have suffered the loss of a loved one, and they're, they're remembering uh, their loved one, but also just for themselves amidst the heartache and the sorrow that they know. Over here we pray for people who, um, who suffer because they are Christians, the people who love the Lord, but they live in countries whereby they are suffering and struggling uh, because of that, because people are against our faith. Over here, we're praying for countries where there's conflict and uh, matters of injustice, things that are wrong in the world. And all the way around the church, there's different things to help us to pray. And Sarah this morning is going to be talking about prayer in her sermon. But to help us, to help you and me to know how to pray, I've got some three items to show you. Now, Okay, one is a rock, all right? The other is a pair of scissors, and the other is a piece of paper. Does anybody put the three together? Does anybody have any ideas? Yeah, do you want to tell me? Rock, paper, scissors. Do you want to come up the front? Do you want to show us how it's done? And Jessica, you had your hand up. Do you want to come up the front too? Yeah? Do you, would you like to? Do you want to come up the front? Okay. Rock, paper, scissors. Now, I was thinking about this a wee minute ago because I tell you why, I forgot my hymn book and I had to share with Jennifer here. And whenever I was a little boy in church, my brother and I used to play rock, paper, scissors to see who was going to hold the hymn book or the prayer book because the hymn book's really kind of heavy, isn't it, you know? And we used to like, rock, paper, scissors. And I always won, always beat him every time. So you want to show us how it's done, all right? So do you want to play rock, paper, scissors, see, who, see how it's gone? Okay, so here we go. Now, Sadie, isn't it? Yes, I got it right. For the first time ever, I got somebody else wrong a wee minute ago. So Sadie went for rock, and you went for paper. Who won that one? Jessica won that one. But why? You do it. Because the paper covers the rock. Do you want to go again? Okay, they both went for scissors, so that cancelled each other out. Go again. One last time. And they went, both went for paper this time, so that cancels each other out. Both went for rock this time, cancels it out. Last go. All right, okay. <laughs> Well, listen, we'll call it a draw. We'll call it a draw. Well done, girls. Well, the rock 
get, it beats the paper, the scissors, because the, it blunts the scissors. The scissors cuts the paper, so it, cover, it beats the paper, and the paper covers the rock, so it wins. So that's how, you, that's how it works. For any of you who don't know, I'm sure you all do. I always get it the wrong way around. I always call it paper, scissors, rock, but I keep getting told it's rock, paper, scissors. Is that the right way? Yeah, okay. Now you might be thinking, you can have a seat, girls. Well done, well done, thank you. You might be thinking, how does this help us to pray? Well, that's a good question, all right? Because... There's a basic little, uh, th- you know, framework when we pray. We see this in the Lord's Prayer. We also see it in James, which Sarah's going to have read in church. Maureen's going to read to us from James later on. And there's a little framework that we, we can take to help us to pray. It's called, thank you, sorry, please. Thank you, sorry, please. And sometimes it's kind of hard to even remember. Oh, thank you, sorry, please. So the way I think it's really quite helpful is this. The rock is an R, R for rock. Now, it's not thank you, not T, thank you, but remembering. R for remembering. Remember to say thank you. Do, or do you ever get told that? I'm sure you do. I'm sure some of the grown-ups got told as well. Remember always to say thank you. Rock for, R for remember, thank you. Scissors is S for sorry, saying sorry to God, saying thank you to God first of all. And then we say, Lord, thank you that you are a merciful God and thank you that you forgive us and I'm sorry for you know, we, we can say sorry. We've already just done it. Sarah led us in a time of saying sorry together. And then P for paper for please. P for please. To say, Lord, please help people who are struggling with the, the reality of, of, of sorrow in their hearts. Help people who are struggling because the countries that they live in, people are against you. Help people who are living in countries like Ukraine, there was conflict. Please, and it doesn't have to be all about other people. It can be about our own needs as well. Thank you, sorry, please. A little framework to help us when we pray. And this morning, we're encouraged to be praying people because that's an expression of our faith. We trust God enough to say thank you, sorry, and please. So let's pray. Loving Lord, we thank you that you are the gracious God who loves us and blesses us in so many ways. We are sorry, Lord, for the way we let you down. We are sorry for the things that we say and do, as we've already done. We can say sorry, Lord, and we thank you for that privilege, but we say sorry, Lord, knowing that we let you down, but you are the good God who is gracious and kind, who is merciful and loves us. And Lord, please help us, uh, help us to pray, but also help us to pray for people uh, and situations uh, in other people's lives and help us to pray for our own needs too. Help us to be a praying people. We thank you for prayer and the gift that it is to be able to talk to you. So, Lord, as we go to Sunday school, bless the Sunday school leaders and children, and we pray for a special time of learning together. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Boys and girls, off you go. I'll follow you down the hill now. And over to Sarah. Thank you very much. Our service continues on page 103. (coughs) O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And we do praise the Lord as we stand together to sing the Venite, which we'll be singing verses 1 to 7.
please be seated as Maureen brings us our first reading. The reading is from Micah chapter 6, verses 6 to 8. You may find this on page 934 of your Pew Bible. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? with 10,000 rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Maureen. Our appointed psalm for today is Psalm 15, and you'll find this on page 606 of your Book of Common Prayer. be seated. Our second reading this morning is from the book of James chapter 5 verses 13 to 18 and you'll find this on page 1216 of your pew bibles. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you ill? 
Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand together as we sing our next hymn, number 294. come before God's word, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift that is prayer, our ultimate communication with you. And so Lord, as we come to learn of it now, we pray that your Holy Spirit would dwell among us, that we would know an awakening sense of your presence, that our ears would be open to hear you and our eyes open to see you, and our hearts ready 
to receive what you have for us, ready to be changed and moulded into the people that you want us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Now, I don't know about you, but there are some things in life that I'm gifted at, and there are just some things I'm really not gifted at. And one of those things I'm really not gifted at is DIY. If there's a DIY issue uh, that I need solving, I always, still to this day, phone my dad. And I always tell this story of taking matters into your own hands, if you will. There was this rule uh, when I was growing up that I wasn't allowed to put any posters on the wall because the blue tap would pull the paint off. And so I thought it might be quite nice to put a new picture on my wall. So because I was in a loud blue tack, I thought, you know, it won't be hard to put a nail in the wall. I can do that. So I went down to Dad's toolbox, lifted a nail, lifted a hammer, and started tapping it in. And as I tapped it in, it didn't quite go in straight, and so I had to take it out. And so as I yanked it out, a a piece of the wall came with it. And I tried to kind of fix it and kind of tape it up so that he wouldn't notice, but he was going to notice. And in the end, I had to go and ask him to fix it. But if only I had gone to him initially and told him what I needed help with and that he would fix the problem, it would have saved a lot of time, a lot of worry, and a lot of materials trying to fix the wall. But as I thought about that, it occurred to me that how I handled that situation reflects often how we handle other problems in life. We often waste a lot of time trying to handle things on our own and in our own strength. And it's only when we turn to prayer as a last resort. And in most cases, what we discover is that if we just made prayer our first response instead of our last resort, it would have avoided a whole lot of wasted time and effort. That is the message in James's passage this morning. There is little doubt to the theme of this passage. In fact, the words pray, prayer, and prayer are used seven times in just six verses, emphasizing the priority of prayer. And it's really appropriate that James is the one who communicates all this about the priority of prayer. Because it is said that he was such a man of prayer himself that his nickname was Camel Knees because of the big knots he developed on his knees as a result of spending so much time in prayer. A mature disciple makes prayer the first response, not the last resort. And so this morning we're going to look at what James says. We're going to look at when should we pray? Who can pray and how should we pray? So firstly, when should we pray? James commands his audience to pray in three very specific circumstances. And the first of that is in verse 13, when he tells us to pray when we are hurting emotionally. He begins the passage by addressing those who are suffering. And the word he uses there is a general Greek word that describes suffering of any kind. But the emphasis is on the anguish that is created in the mind as a result of whatever circumstances the person is experiencing. So he's primarily dealing there with people who are hurting emotionally as a result of some trouble in their lives. And even though the underlying problem may be something tangible or material, the real issue is the emotional hurt that accompanies that issue. We all experience problems that result in emotional hurt in our lives. Problems in our family, problems in our relationships, financial problems, problems at work, and even problems with our lack of DIY skills. And those problems often lead to stress and anxiety. And I don't know about you, but my first response in those situations is usually to try and fix the problem on my own. And in many, if not most cases, what happens is that my efforts just create even more stress. But James teaches us there is a better way. 
When we are hurting emotionally, when we experience stress and anxiety, prayer should not be our last resort. It needs to be our first response. Paul confirms this in Philippians when he says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. The antidote to our emotional hurts, to our stress and anxiety, is not just to take some things to God in prayer, but to take everything to God in prayer. Our relationships, our finances, our jobs, anything that is stressing us out. And it's really interesting that James immediately follows that command to pray when we are hurting emotionally with the command to sing praise and be cheerful. It also almost seems like the opposite of what we want to do when we are hurting emotionally. But this word translated cheerful doesn't just mean to be happy or to feel good. It implies optimism and joy even in the face of danger and trouble. The implication is clear when we pray as our first response in the midst of our emotional hurt, God overcomes our anxiety and allows us to have a heart of praise. So are you hurting emotionally? Then make prayer your first response, not your last resort. James then says in verses 14 to 15, when to pray when we are hurting physically, <clears throat> And verse 14 and part of 15 raise some questions that are really difficult to answer. And I'm not sure that we can definitively answer all those questions. But I am convinced that there is enough here that is clear to be of practical use for us in our prayer life. <clears throat> the word sick or ill, which we see in verse 14, describes someone with a serious illness. It is the same word used to describe Lazarus who died from his sickness and the same that is used to describe the man at the pool of Bethsaida. So James is describing someone who is experiencing physical trouble here, probably someone with health issues so severe that a doctor couldn't help. They're so severe that the elders had to come to them rather than them going to the elders to try and get prayer. But the real difficulty, however, comes with dealing with the first part of verse 15. It says, And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. And on the surface, that makes it sound like as long as the prayer is offered up in faith, there is a guarantee that God is going to heal a sick person. But we know from Scripture and indeed from our own personal experience that that is not the case. Even when prayers are offered, sometimes healing doesn't come. And in order to understand what James is trying to say here, we need to understand that in the Bible, sickness generally falls into three categories. Sickness unto death, sickness for discipline. And the sickness that James is talking about is sickness for the glory of God. Sickness for the glory of God. The problem that we have is that we're unable to discern which kind of sickness with which someone is afflicted. And the implication of that lack of insight is obvious. We need to pray whenever someone experiences any kind of sickness. So are you hurting physically? Then make prayer your first response, not your last resort. Lastly, James tells us to pray when we are hurting spiritually. And this is the situation uh, from verse 15 onwards. God has promised to heal our emotional hurt, our physical hurts that are part of his will for his glory. But he also promises to heal our spiritual hurts as well. And that's why James makes it clear that if we are hurting because of sin, prayer will lead to the forgiveness of those sins which will bring spiritual healing. But there's a clause, there's a condition, there's this little promise in addition to prayer. There's one more action that we are commanded to take. When we want to be healed of our spiritual hearts, we are commanded to confess our sins. Now we do this in every service that we have. We have a confession uh, time together. 
And we do that because we believe that we are an imperfect people, but we believe in a perfect God who forgives us our sins. And we do it not just because it's tradition, but because we are commanded to do it. We feel God day to day, and we need to come before him and confess our sin. And so if you're hurting spiritually, then make prayer your first response, not your last resort. James then goes on to address who can pray. And he gives us two clues that help us answer that question. The first clue is found at the end of verse 16 when he says, The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. So the first thing that we learn to be effective prayer must come from a righteous person. So the question then we must ask is, how does someone become a righteous person? And the Bible is clear that we cannot do this life on our own. That God is the only way that we can be righteous. It is through faith in Jesus, the one who shed his blood on the cross for us. We need his strength day in and day out, and not our own. James goes on to give this example of Elijah. And we know that Elijah doubted God many times. He suffered from depression And he asked God to take away his life. He was afraid. And the lesson of Elijah is that you don't have to be perfect to pray. We come as imperfect people to a perfect God. And so how should we pray? Well, this isn't even a topic that you can get into one short sermon. But there's three significant aspects that we are to pray. And James moves on from the individual prayer of let him pray or or let him call to the corporate, let us pray, pray for one another. A healthy prayer life includes both individual and corporate prayer. In fact, our individual prayer often leads us to reach out to the entire body so that we can pray together. That's one of the reasons we've been trying to include here in our day of prayer, that we can pray for each other, but also that we can pray together. And there are lots of things that we can pray about, but James limits this to three instances, that we are to pray when we are hurting emotionally, hurting physically, and hurting spiritually. I want you for a moment uh, just to think of those three areas. Think of your prayer life, how you pray for yourself personally, and how you pray for others. And which of those three areas is most often the focus of your prayers? Emotional heart, physical heart, or spiritual heart? And I know when I look at my own prayer life that I usually tend to pray for things more physically rather than spiritually and emotionally. But James is saying that we need to pray for it all, to bring everything before God. And when he writes that Elijah prayed fervently, he employed um, this expression that says, Elijah prayed a prayer. And he's referring to 1 Kings. And God reveals to Elijah that he is going to bring rain upon the land after three and a half years of drought. But even after he reveals that to Elijah, he commands Elijah to pray. And after Elijah prays, God commands him to go and look toward the sea. And Elijah saw nothing. Elijah was commanded to do that seven more times. And finally, after the last prayer, a small cloud appeared in the sky. And a short time later, the clouds became black and the winds and rain came. Now, obviously, God didn't need Elijah's prayers in order to bring rain to the land, but God desired that Elijah would be involved with what God was going to do through his prayer life. And he didn't let Elijah off the hook with just praying one haphazard short prayer and it would happen immediately. He required Elijah to pray persistently and fervently in faith. Do we pray like that? persistently. I know I don't very often, but we want to be people of prayer like James and Elijah. 
And our prayer this morning should be that we desire to pray like that. The prayer isn't just this chore. It isn't just something that we do right before we go go to bed and we fall asleep halfway through because I've been there. But actually it is something that we do as a first response. It is our hope and our stay. It is our strength. It is what gets us through this life. And so as we end this morning, I'm not going to pray, but I am going to ask you to close your eyes. And I'm going to share the words of a hymn which we know all too well. What a friend we have in Jesus. And let these words be our prayer this morning. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Jesus is our only refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do your friends despise, forsake you? Take it to the Lord of prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield you. You will find a solace there. Amen. We stand together as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 112. We say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. As Jesus taught us, we pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the King, and grant his government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness. Let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us and renew us by your Holy Spirit. We continue in a time of prayer. Creator God, source of all life and all wisdom, we adore you and boast in your love. Christ crucified who walked humbly on this earth, 
We adore you and boast in your love. Holy Spirit, who leads and guides our steps, we adore you and boast in your love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we adore you. God of peace, justice, mercy, and love, thank you that in you we inherit the earth. Thank you that we are your children. Thank you that as we mourn, we are comforted. Thank you that as we seek for righteousness, we are filled. Thank you that in you we receive your mercy. Thank you that we can see you through our changed hearts. Thank you that in your upside down kingdom, we find rest, peace, comfort and assurance of your presence with us. Thank you, Lord, that in life's darker times, we are never alone that you are always by our side. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In humility and need, we gather our prayers for others. Our headline news shocks us with so many and so much cruelty, tragedy and suffering that we barely know where to begin in our praying for those in need. But you, O Lord, do hear us. We pray for those who do not know you, who do not know the depths of your love and care, who live with poverty of spirit and understanding, confusion and denial of you. For them all, may your spirit speak to them, and may the deeds and the words of our actions, of how we live, shine with your spirit for them to see. For those who know you but know they fall short of what you call them to be, give them encouragement to strive more and learn more and believe more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn, who have had their lives changed, turned upside down by the death of family, friends or neighbours. In their grief, may we and you be a comfort to them a strength in times of trouble, a light to lead the way in their darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who daily, no matter what the cost to themselves, speak out your words of truth, who live lives reflecting your glory, who each day step out to help and heal and care and show your love, even in the face of danger. Lord, we pray that you would protect them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who find it within them to forgive others who really repent, those who forgive for the good of others and society, those who show mercy and compassion, and those who are finding it difficult to forgive. Lord, we thank you that you forgive us, that although we fail you, you forgive us each and every day. And so, Father, we pray that you would equip us to be people of forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who work for peace, who strive for peace and who yearn for peace those who engage in the highest levels of state seeking peace, and those who stand on the battlefield, yearning for conflict to end and peace to be restored. For those caught in the middle, who fell helpless and hopeless in the face of war and aggression. Lord, we pray that your justice and your mercy would prevail. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the people whose tragedies, injustice, crisis and suffering make the news headlines today, Lord, we pray that you would bring comfort, that they would know that you hear their every prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our families, our friends, our neighbours, those we know and love and care for, who need our prayers, especially this day. 
and we bring them before your feet now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our words, O God, and hear the yearnings of our hearts, that we may walk humbly with you, sharing love and generosity wherever we go. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. We collect for the fourth Sunday after Epiphany. Creator God, who in the beginning commanded the light to shine out of darkness, we pray that the light of the glorious gospel of Christ may dispel the darkness of ignorance and unbelief, shine into the hearts of all your people, and reveal the knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We stand together as we sing our offertory hymn, which is number 606. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing, so that by the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Amen. We sing our closing hymn number 636.
we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.